My name is Mike Wei. I'm the uh, forecasting product manager. I'm thrilled to be back. I think last time when I was here for release readiness, it wasn't live. So it's great to be here live in person. So I'm here to talk about uh, the summer feature that's going to change the way how you can do forecasting within an application, how the data is being displayed. So first, I'm going to talk about the feature. So the feature is going to be called Cumulative Forecast Rollup. So what it does is gives you a clear idea of the actual numbers that sales is going to bring in by, by looking at the actual forecast category you're in plus any subsequent categories, right? So that's defining your sales process. For example, if we say commit forecast, it means commit plus closed, right? So I'm going to explain two slides to explain what this means, but I think it's very complicated. So I'll make sure I'll show you what you fe with, with this feature on, without a feature, what the data, data looks like, and then ask your sales team, do you want this feature enabled? So first, I want to talk about differences between cumulative and without, right? So you can see on the left side here, this is prior to some feature. If you don't turn on this pref, this is what you see within the forecast application, right? So when we say close, so the data is all based on your distinct forecast categories. So when we say close, it means the deal's only enclosed. When we say commit, it only means the deal's in commit. When we say best case, it only means the deal's in best case. When we say pipeline, this only means the deal's in pipeline. So you can see here, I drew in bubbles to illustrate, hey, the distinctions of these uh, categories separately within a forecast tab, right? So I think this is a good use case to ask, based on all your opportunity, where are the deals sitting, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how uh, if a sales team process, sales forecast process based on this, I think you, want, you don't want this feature on, right? But I know a lot, of a lot of companies, when they forecast numbers, it's more based on cumulative forecast categories, right? So it's a data based on aggregation of forecast categories. You can see here, we'll, give you, that we'll have these defined definitions first if you enable this uh, pref. So basically, closed means closed. When we say commit forecast, it means a combination of closed plus commit. When we say best case forecast, it's a combination of closed plus commit plus best case. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is a little different. We call it open pipeline, right? It's all the four categories of closed. It's basically commit plus best case plus pipeline so mm -hmm. without closed to basically give you, let the, let the reps and manager know how much pipeline is there for them to work with to get to that number that's trying to close. Right? So I drew here, I'll show you the bubble, show you some of the overlap data that we're showing. Right? So I think this is, also, this is very good at telling you, based on all your opportunities, what is or what will sales deliver. Right? So if your forecast is based on this, I recommend this pref uh, on. And to illustrate further, I actually put a simple example in Excel. Right? So I have one period that's called like January, so period A, right? You can see throughout the time frame from A to E, right, how the data changes, right? So I had, and early on, I had no, uh, nothing closed, 100 in commit, 30 in best case, right? And then let's just assume throughout the period, all your deals were slowly closed from commit, best case to close, right? And only, only at the end, $10 in best case were not closed, right? So you can see on, on the left side, prior to the cumulative feature, right? So if you had this, this view, this is where the sales team manage your forecast based on where the deals are, right? You can see the numbers just slowly keep changing from commit best case to close, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can also override this value, think it's valuable, right? But I think most sales team, like I said, will focus on the right side with the cumulative forecast categories, right? So you can see the exact same data, how it's represented differently, right? You can see the close over time increase as more deal close, right? Mm -hmm. But in your commit plus close, where your commit forecast is very stable. Right, so you can see this is the number based on the data in Salesforce that we think that sales, the, the sales rep or manager is going to deliver. Right? I think this is where the reps can go override thinking, hey, what's my commit forecast? What's my, basically my downside? Right? And then the close plus commit plus best case on the right, on the very right, is basically the best case forecast. So you can see here the number is also very stable. And then only at the very end, I see it drop by 10. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is a good place for the reps or managers to go and make adjustments to let the management team, team know this is my upside or my best case forecast, right? So you have now a view of what, what like the, lo the lower threshold of a, forca for a sales forecast might look like and the upper threshold, right? So I think this is a good example to ask your sales team which process makes more sense to them, right? So which of these resonate with you? So I think it's good to ask the uh, sales reps and sales team before you go to on this pref, like if you, if you, don't, want this, if you don't want this feature, I re recommend not to not turn off this pref, mm -hmm. but if you want it, go turn it on. Hmm. And the next one, I'm going to show a screenshot, basically what it looks like in case my demo doesn't work. So you can see here, I, I highlight over commit forecast, right? You can see when you hover, we have information bubbles over the description of the, uh, 
of forecast categories, right? You can see uh, close, commit forecast is a roll up of your commit and close, right? So when you click on that cell, you can see all the opportunities underneath it is composing of commit and close, right? So you can see all the opportunities composing that number. So next, I'm going to go to a quick demo. So here's my demo. So you can see here, I'm actually logged in as Valerie Jones. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, sales manager log in to see my forecast. So I want to do a quick, quick overview for those not familiar, right? So you can see I'm forecast based on quarter. So you can set based on quarter or month, right? And I can see all my subordinates reporting under me. So all the sales rep reporting up, up to me and what number they're bringing in, right? And then right now, I have the pref turn on for cumulative forecast categories. See across the top, I have close. Commit forecast is commit and close, right? And I, as I showed you before, now if I click on this cell, let's say I want to click on Q2, Valerie Jones's commit forecast, right? If I hover over this, now I see some details, right? See underneath, I see all the opportunities associated to that number. And also when I hover, I see the underlying opportunities what's added up to. So it's about 2.2 million without any adjustments that's being put in, right? I see my reps actually put in, they're actually saying it actually become a little lower. They say it's closer to 2.1 million, mm -hmm. right? But I still get the same functionality where actually as a manager, I can still override this value. I actually think my team is actually sandbagging, right? So I can put a note <laughs> here, team is sandbagging for sure. So I can put context, same functionality as before, I could put context when I make an adjustment. So once I save now, now I'm overriding what the reps I commit forecast would commit into, so I say, hey, it's 2.5 million. Now this number is now visible for my, ma for my manager to see, hey, what the number I think my team's gonna bring in. Mm -hmm. So it brings the extra value, right? And then also, when you turn this pref on, it's, it's enabled, the cumulative pref on, it's enabled for all forecast types, right? So here, for example, I have off the opportunity revenue, which is off the opportunity amount. You still get it off the custom field forecast, for example, you have margin. You still get the same for by product family and by overlay splits, right? In addition, we preserve, if you turn this on, we pre preserve your quotas. So you can still look at your quotas and you can still show attainment, looking, hey, I can see now, if, my, if, I, if I think my team's gonna deliver 2.5 million, right, they'll, they'll hit about 143% of quota. Mm -hmm. So we give that visibility to what the rest will achieve, right? And next I'll go to reporting very quickly, same to go to reporting. So you get the same, so all the forecast reports in collaborative are custom report types that you built, right? Mm -hmm. The only additional change that we have is now for with the cumulative feature turned on, there's actually, instead of forecast category, because now we have a roll up of a forecast categories, now mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. So now we have a new, um, new field called forecasting item category that should, that'll get you that, show you that combination of commit forecast. But in additionally, we'll give you also your old data of your distinct forecast category, so, right? So I know even if you have the preference on to see the cumulative view within reporting, you still do get the detail of the distinct forecast category. So I can still look at reports to see how much, uh, how much is in each stage, right? Mm -hmm. How much is each uh, forecast category, how much the deals are co comprising there. But you, can't, you can override that value. And then now go back to my presentation. So where does admin go set this up, right? So it's very easy set up within the forecast tab. So right, belie right, right beneath the uh, adjustment uh, enablement there, mm -hmm. you have this enable cumulative forecast category. We have a brief description to turn on, right? And then also once you enable this, there's a caveat because you can, as I, as I showed before in my example, the data structure is very different. So there's no way for us to preserve the adjustments you made in your, in, without this feature. Mm -hmm. So basically, we'll purge your adjustments, but we'll keep your quota, right? And additionally, right now, with the uh, cumulative forecast roll-up feature, we don't have historical trending available yet. It's on the roadmap, but we want to get the feature out. So we figured uh, this is a good feature to have because you have reporting, just we would be missing the uh, historical capability. Now back to uh, Mike for some questions. Great. Yep, so that was, uh, that was actually a very useful demonstration. And I got to imagine, every sales cloud user that we have that forecast out of Salesforce, which we hope are all of you, uh, should be very interested in what you just said. I cannot wait to hear what they're saying on Twitter. Elna. Well, uh, actually, I, I'm kind of interested in what, who would need the Cumulus forecast feature? I mean, what, what's the profile of a customer who would most benefit from this feature? So I feel like with the Cumulus feature, it's good for like enterprise customers, right? Especially at the exec level. What they want ultimately at the exec level is to know what is the number that the sales reps is going to bring in, my entire sales organization, right? Because the forecast has implications down the line. Say, so, hey, it helps with their planning. It helps with like, uh, like planning and knowing how the revenues might come out. So it's very important to get that visibility, right? So I think for a lot of enterprise customers, 
if they want that type of data, I recommend turn this pre the preference on, right? Because it tells you exactly what we think the sales rep's gonna deliver. Mm -hmm.